Welcome, dear students. Last time we gave an introduction to August Belson, the piano lesson, uh, its plot, and uh, the first of the dramatic devices he used, uh, which is the piano. Today we are going to complete our discussion of the dramatic devices uh, employed in uh, the piano lesson. Uh, number two, the land, the land. The land is another central dramatic device used by Wilson to tackle the issue of blacks in America. Like Bearden, okay, Bearden is a great African-American painter. Wilson adopts the image of the land as a symbol for independence, stability, and free will. So, uh, the, the land, again, just as the piano, is both a, a device and a symbol. It stands for independence, stability, and free will. In the black man's never-ending quest for identity and recognition, he is always eager to possess a piece of land. Wilson justifies this keen desire in the following lines. I'm quoting his own words. Land is the basis of independence. People all over the world fight about what? They fight about land. Here is a man who says, just give me a little piece of land and I'll be satisfied. I'll bid one big future with it. I can always get me six pianos. If that piano can help me get some land, let me get my land. It is just a question. Maybe he was right. Maybe he was wrong. But I think the play stated the question clearly. To show the importance of the land as a device in Wilson's drama, it is enough to, to mention that the word land is repeated 39 times in the play. In so doing, Wilson is trying to put heavy emphasis on this element to signal its importance in the mind and heart of every African American, since it is the only thing that is really worthy of sacrificing everything else, okay, whatever it might be. For example, Boy Willie doesn't hesitate to sell the piano for the sake of obtaining Satter's land. It is the same land his forefathers farm it for years. He tells his sister, I am trying to get me some land. I need that piano to get me some money so I can buy Sarah's land. Bywali has fled this, the north, the south, okay, because he was in the south, he lived in the south before coming to the north. He has fled the South after working on the white man's land for a long time. Basically, he fled because he hates the idea of working just to keep his living as his father did in the past. Apparently, he has a keen desire to be his own master and determine his future by himself. Unless Boywelli finds himself some piece of land and obtains full command over it, then he's doomed to remain as a slave for a long time and never attain freedom. This is manifested when he states that his daddy, and I quote, his daddy spent his whole life farming on somebody else's land. I ain't going to do that. Again and again, now and then, Bywali considers the white's possession of land as the main source of their power over blacks. African Americans lack self-determination because they could only serve in the white man's land as slaves. He believes that once the white man's property is gone, this despotism, the despotism of the white man, shall come to an end. In case African Americans put their hands on some land, they will enjoy the same rights and privileges valid for the whites alone, he explains, and I quote, See how, if he had his own land, he wouldn't have felt that way. 
If he had something under his feet that belonged to him, he could stand up taller. If you get a, if you could just get a piece of land, you'll find everything fall right into place. You can stand right up next to the white man and talk about the price of cotton, the weather, and anything else you want to talk about. The end of quote. By acquiring the land from the white grandson, okay, who is Setter, of course, Baiwali will take over the source of power of the white slave master, grandfather, who traded Baiwali's and Bernice's great grandmother for the piano in the past. Only through this strategy, Baiwali may be redefining, redefining or remaking the history of enslavement and racial oppression that still blocks him, that still hinders, obstructs him from realizing the, sh the share, his due share of the American dream. Through the image of the land, Wilson again stresses the mistake that African Americans committed in the past by migrating to the north. He considers African Americans' migration to the north as a huge mistake. He reproves them, blames them, because he could eventually gain economic power by owning the land in the south. Instead, in the north, they still encounter prejudice and find themselves locked in extremely poor neighborhoods and working in menial and humiliating jobs. Uh, let's move to the second or the third, the third dramatic device used by Wilson this way, which is the train. The train is extremely important in African American history. It symbolizes many things, such as the Underground Railroad, which is the escape route okay, from slave states and the great migration to jobs in the North and West after emancipation during the early period of the 20th century. Wilson believe, believes that trains are so much a part of Negro life. The train is another indicative device found in many of his plays, many of Wilson's plays. He uses the symbol of the train, this device, to signify the moment African Americans migrated from the rural society of the, no of the South to the industrial society of the North at the beginning of the 20th century. It, I mean the train, stands for the great migration of blacks in their search for emancipation and, uh, emancipation and dignity. Of course, emancipation from slavery and subordination to the white man. And in the pursuit of a better and fertile soil for success as well. The blacks packed themselves on board trains heading north as a refuge from the aggressive south where they had been deprived of the simplest civil rights granted only to the whites. The train acted as a bridge on which blacks crossed to the other side where the so-called American dream would have probably been waiting for them. The train as a historical symbol thus connotes multiple feelings and emotions for African Americans. These emotions and feelings are attached to sorrow and pain because the train reminds, reminds them of moments of suffering and frustration which they endured during their life in the southern states. It is also a witness, an eyewitness, to the failure and disillusionment in the north. This train, the image of the train, shall always be the vehicle for blacks, the transportation of blacks, transporting them not only from the south to the north, but also backwards 
from the north to the south. At first, African Americans migrated to the north for greater job opportunities. However, they were eventually distant. They were eventually doomed to board the same vehicle again to remigrate, to remigrate from the uh, north to the south. But why did they do that? They did so on realizing the futility of their attempts to survive and to cope with the white northern society. This is signified in Boyweller's constant reference of going back to the south, particularly after the battle with Sutter's ghost at the final scene. He says, I'm ready to go back down home. Hey, Duker, Duker is his uncle. What time the train, the train leaves? The end of the quote. Boyweller's determination to return to the south alludes also to Wilson's vision that African Americans are to be blamed for deciding to migrate to the North and abandon their culture and tradition. He urges them to reconsider their decision and maintains that their survival is dependent on their clinging to the past, to their past legacy. The train will always be there to secure a life Okay, a safe, okay, a safe path, a safe life, bridging the unseen spiritual defect, bridging the unseen spiritual defect, created both in the south and in the north, the past and the future. This viewpoint is apparent. As Wilson himself, August Wilson, admits that, he says, and I quote his own words, I think it was a terrible mistake. I think that we would have been better had we stayed in the South and never boarded that train. I think our culture and uh, tradition would have never been stronger if we had stayed in the South. It would have been... Uh, continued to grow and develop along the, the lines that it was going. When we left, okay, we left people behind there. We left all people who were unable or unwilling to make the trip north to the, to the new life. They died. End of the quotation. This grievous mistake Wilson talks, talks about, which the train connotes, implies is more and more stressed in Avery's situation in the piano lesson. Avery is a suitor uh, of Bernice. At first, Avery advances forward to fulfilling his dream of building a small church in the north and becoming a preacher dressed in the costume of a preacher. He is glad that he no longer has to pick cotton the way he did in the past, picking cotton on farms, working on farms. However, at the end of the play, Avery is frustrated as he fails to secure a spot in which he can make his own dream come true. He fails. He has to address the bank for a loan in order to establish his church, the Good Shepherd Church as he calls it. After the failure of his attempts, even with the bank, he contemplates about boarding the same train again and going back to the south. Uh, now, let's talk about the fourth element, the fourth dramatic device and symbol used by Wilson in this play, the piano lesson, which is the big hands the big hands of African Americans. The hand stands for multiple things. Action, activity, power, domination, and even protection. In the piano lesson, the symbol of the big hand, this device, is mentioned many times. 
this symbol carries specific connotations for Wilson. You know, he tries, on one hand, to tell us that the black's hands are big in size due to their endless, endless work and effort in the South on the white man's plantations, farms. On the other side, he exposes the fact that these big hands become useless and futile in the North. The black man cannot benefit from these big hands anymore since his chances in this biased community at the time as the American community, his chances are so limited, if not completely absent. The jobs he expects to find in the North turn out to be a mere illusion. His big hand is helpless against the injustice and the repression any African American confronts in this society. The image of the big hand is also a constant reminder of the frustration and disappointment of blacks within this, the American society. And this kind of frustration stems from their inability to support their families financially. The deteriorated economic conditions of blacks and the, and the shortages in the labor market in the time are further stressed in Boywell's frustrated confession, which is worth quoting. He says, What I want to bring a child into this world for? Why I want to bring somebody else into all this for? I'll tell you this. If I was Rockefeller, I'd have 40 or 50, he means children. I'd make one every day, one child. Because they're going to start out in life with all the advantages. The advantages valid only for white people. I ain't got any advantages to offer nobody. End of the quotation. The repetition of the phrase big hands in the piano lesson signals Wilson's emphasis on the importance of blacks' awareness of their own capabilities to vitally progress in the American society. They must have confidence and belief in themselves that they are equally gifted and talented, just like the whites. And this is a reality they all should, should build on, should have a belief in. Equally important, the image of the big hands suggests that African Americans should start depending on themselves in providing food, clothing, shelter, houses I mean, and jobs for their families. They must stop depending on white Americans in securing the necessities of their lives. Wilson believes that the all should begin to create an economic basis, okay, exclusively for blacks, an economy only for blacks. They should start building houses, supermarkets, clubs, and even banks only for African Americans. In this way, in this way only enough jobs will be provided and the problem of unemployment will be resolved. Only through this strategy, African Americans can survive. The whites' control of the state's infrastructure expelled blacks from the economic equation in the past. All these buildings and all these facilities generate money and job opportunities, but only for whites. None of it ever goes to the black folk who makes up a large percent of the American people. If blacks get their equal rights, they shall be in a much stronger position in society than they already are. This symbol, this device, the big hands, reflects Wilson's belief that African Americans have got adequate human resources and potentials, but unfortunately, they waste it. 
they should begin to utilize it for themselves. Black people have different skills. Some blacks are highly educated, highly educated persons, just as whites. But the only problem is that they work for the white, for the white people, instead of working for themselves and for their own race. Wilson clearly expresses this viewpoint through Boy Welly, who states, Ain't no difference in me and the white man, and I am living at the top of life. I am in the world like everybody else. Wilson believes that African Americans are capable of doing something great and immortal for the sake of the race, something you know that would be appreciated by the whole world. White men have always been hostile to blacks, even in considering them helpless, futile, and incapacitated of being on an equal footing. Wilson employs the symbol, this symbol of the big hands, to empower African Americans so that they can acknowledge and celebrate their difference and uniqueness. Uh, thank you and see you inshallah next lecture.